everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 29. Jump into things. Okay, so we've got a little bit of stuff come, going on. We've got uh, four Owl Quills from Fomoria. This is an exchange for a Dwarf Hammer. We have finished Conjuration 3 on our way up to Conjuration 4. Got a Marcotta Scout who has claimed the Throne of the Sun. No sites or no magic sites discovered here. And then we've got a couple of little events and battles, so let's watch them thing. Okay, so this is a battle between Kailasa and Angia. Go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so we get to see a little bit of what Kailasa is packing. Okay, so this is a grouping of Yavanas with some Bandar swordsmen mixed in, some Yaka's mixed in. Uh, there's a Yakshina in here with a little bit of gear, some strangeish gear. A couple of yogis, right? Oh, and a Yaksha. A couple Yakshas, actually. Okay, cool. So. This is up against just province defense, so nothing super exciting here. But we get to see what's going on with Kailasa, what Kailasa's packing. Well, let's go ahead and watch some stuff. So we see a couple things go off immediately, right? We're seeing Strength of Giant castings, uh, multiple Strength of Giants castings, to the point to where they hit almost the entire party that they have with these two Strength of Giants castings, which is pretty cool. Because it does boost these Yavanas up into pretty kind of hard-hitting killy territory, which is pretty sweet. And then we're getting, you know, uh, the yogis are doing other blessing, other things like uh, body ethereal luck. Got this Yakshini who's doing liquid body, you know, personal buffs, that type of stuff. We've got. Legions of Steel going out, okay. More Body Ethereal, some other personal buffs. And we got some Blessings. That go. So let's go ahead and check the Bless on Kailasa. Kailasa has Magic Weapons, Shock Resistance 10, Fire 10, 15, Cold 10, Reinvigoration 1, Bark Skin, Magic Resistance 1, and Mountain Survival. So the, a pretty, pretty intense Bless, honestly. Um, that's pretty hefty. Very geared towards late game right you can obviously tell with the uh, with the makeup that kailasa has right what kailasa is going here is is a bless that works in the early game but is really going to shine late game once you get stuff like like army of letter army of gold right because once you get the base attack or the base uh, protection of these units up, which is, that's kind of the, the weakness for um, for Kailasa's units, is having low natural protection, right? They are buffed because of bark skin, but normally they have very low natural protection. You get these guys into 20 protection territory with all of these buffs, with these resistance buffs, magic weapons, they're really going to be able to stick it out with a lot of different, a lot of different guys. So that's pretty cool. Okay, this is going to be a nothing fight. They're literally, I mean, I'm just going to run over. So, very interesting. Okay, cool. So Kailasa raid or doesn't raid attacks Pangea wins. Nothing. We uh, are attacking in Greenwoods. This is a very small party against a very large amount of troglodytes. And we anticipate losses here, though we anticipate a victory. And it looks like that's exactly what happened. Yep. So we lost... Ooh, we lost 10. So 4 Chosen and 6 Regards. Against so many troglodytes, these guys hit really hard. Um, so, is what it is. Next up, what do we got? We've got 
Ooh, a Oberg scholar has plans to revolutionize agriculture. So we get a horticulturist for this, which is a, a little earth nature mage to begin with. But he also gets a bonus to his earth magic. So this is actually pretty cool. And then we have a event in Wood of Many Pass where a pack of sea dogs is attacking. We get also in Wood of Many Paths a tax bonus. And then we have a magic plus one event. Okay. So let's watch this attack in Wood of Many Paths. All right, so that's a lot of sea dogs. Sea dogs aren't really anything special, but they are pretty fast. Aquatic. And we do not have much of a force here yet, unfortunately. Oof. Oh no! Oh, we lost an elder. All right, so that is pretty rough. We killed seven of the sea dogs. Yeah. Lost that province, lost that elder. I'm really, like, I I've said it multiple times at this point, but I'm really not super enthusiastic about the, the build that I've gone here. I've played a lot of Ur in the past, and I really do think I enjoy scales better on them. If for no other reason than to not have to deal with this type of shit as much. Like, I feel like we've gotten attacked multiple, so many times. So many times. But, I mean, that's misfortune, right? That's why I tend to not go misfortune. So, what are we doing? Um, we've been talking about, we've been spending a lot of time in the last few videos talking about board state, talking about what's going on. Um, talked about, in the video prior to the last one, we talked a lot about our plans with Pan. Gia, the alliance with Kailasa and Hinam and potentially Mictland, who still has never gotten back to me, by the way. Um, and then last turn, we had the big army from Yomi coming at us and Yomi's kind of extortion policy towards us and everything that happened from there. So... To kind of update you on that situation, obviously, we can see Kailasa is fighting against Pangeo. I, I, I cannot see anything, but from what I know, um, Hinnom is attacking Pangea in the Sarmatian lands, okay? And unfortunately, I'm not really attacking Pan right at this moment. I, but I am making plans. I am making plans. Uh, because we're, we are we need to hit Yomi. Uh, we need to hit Yomi relatively hard. We need to hit Yomi relatively fast. Um, this is going to be an awkward situation where we're trying to, trying to have our cake and eat it too. So we have spoken to Lanka. Lanka broke the, or not broke, ended their non-aggression pact with Yomi last turn. Yomi has since come to me and tried to take my previous offer, right? Um, I don't know if they realize that I have arranged this situation or not, but uh, they should be, instead of, because my previous offer was still to pay them, but it's at this point... They should be offering to pay me to leave them alone. Because you don't extort someone like that and then you know, expect them to back off. So um, what we're anticipating this turn, primarily we are moving into position to be able to start hitting Yomi in the next few turns and to try to position ourselves against Pangea as well. Let's talk about actual movements. NC3 is moving into Perina. NC3 from Perina is going to hit Mag. Uh, NC1 is patrolling in Agartha, along with Masanapada and a bunch of other mages, right? Next turn, uh, once I declare the attack on Mag, I'm also going to move into Neotha. And then the turn after that, I'm probably going to hit Eel with both forces and then start to progress into Yomi's territory in one large army, okay? 
Um, this is going to be potentially problematic, but I think it's probably going to be best if we stay as one big army. It does have Dionys. We're going to have to worry about fly attack rear commands from any air Dionys that he potentially has. Um, but this timeline should allow us to create a very narrow causeway of war pretty early on while Lanka is attacking Yomi. And again, right, we're going to do our fair part in this war, but we kind of want Lanka to do the majority of the work and take the lion's share of the fight um, and the profits. We are going to take a little bit of stuff, you know, hopefully these three provinces and maybe something else while Lanka takes the rest. And the intention there is because I only want to put so much attention towards Yomi. I want to put enough attention towards Yomi to where Yomi is hurt and Yomi basically... Or Yomi has to focus on Lanka to not die. And then when that's the case, I can pull out and I can turn my attention towards Pan fully, though I do plan to turn my attention to Pan prior to that. Okay? So... We're moving NC3 into Perina for that plan. We're moving NC2 back to Ur in order to pick up um, both this posse and this. Okay, So that will give him five Mushushus and a decent little party. Then we will probably move into Sinkhole Swamp and then attack one of many paths with the intention of probably wrapping around and heading towards Pangaea at that time. Now that is several turns after what I want to do or, or when I was wanting to target Pan and that might very well change. I might actually just hit Ur and then head into Kunaral and then start heading into other locations, right? But we will see because I'm not sure yet. Recruitment wise... I'm recruiting Galas. Mostly I'm recruiting Galas in Ur and Koenberg just because I need... I, I had money issues this turn. I didn't have crazy money issues this turn. I had close to like 1,200 gold this turn because of the increased tax event in Wood of Many Paths. But uh, I wanted to get researchers in every single location to compensate for the fact that I'm about to lose mages up in the north to war. So I got Galas in Ur and Koenberg, and then in Perenna and Agartha, I'm getting Ishibs to add to our Ishib ranks so that we have more people to cast Smite Demon, basically. Um, along with other things, right? Because we can start, if we look at um, kind of our options, right? Ishibs can do Voice of Apsu, and I can start site searching via that. Uh, Ishibs can do uh, an alteration. They can do quickness, right? So this is an area of effect one, so I can potentially hit two... Um... My mind's blanking. I can hit two Urguard or Inky's Chosen or something like that, right? Because I can fit two per square. Or I can pop, like, if I have a cluster of Ishibs, I can actually put them behind... Um, a group of Mushushus and I can have the Mushushus hold an attack and then get a couple casts of quickness off on that group of Mushushus and all of a sudden those Mushushus, one, become the speed of lightning and two, they become incredibly dangerous. Uh, they're already incredibly dangerous but even more so, right? So this is absolutely something that's very useful in, in a battle um, that Ishibs can kind of contribute to. Along with the Smite Demon default, right? All good. What else? We're site searching in a number of different locations. Our magic income is actually not too bad. Um, it's not the best, but it's not too bad. We've got one fire, two air. Would really love to have more air at this point. We've kind of gotten very unlucky on air. We've, we're doing pretty well on water. We're doing okay on earth i say okay on earth really we're not doing great on earth this is because we have a second capital that's why we're doing so good uh death is whatever nature we've got eight which is pretty good uh, next turn i really want to put a
my brain is going too fast for my mouth. Next turn, I want to put down a lab in Sinkhole Swamp so that I can recruit some bone readers for sight searching and so that I can recruit shamans again for sight searching. Right? Um, obviously, we want to get some people up into Tessaphon eventually to be able to get some crystal sorceresses. But this is all just, you know, it just takes time. And even if I had those locations right now, I can barely afford to do all of the things that I'm doing. And really not a big fan of this build. It, it does not it does not make use of the uh, income power that I think Ur can kind of benefit from. Right? Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna play it out and see how it goes. Uh, another big thing that I'm doing is I am moving Nazar the the second out to search in locations to continue sight searching right um, he does at the very least provide us three paths that we're basically guaranteed to find or there's nothing there right and i think that's about it that is about it for the turn it's a very simple turn uh next turn is where the excitement's gonna happen um so i will say this yomi moved uh, his army away because lanka because Lanka ended their nap. Right? So that was last turn. So it's possible that they moved their army towards the north, right? To try to face off against Lanka. I am not going to respond to their prompt for uh, accepting the former agreement, right? So it's possible that they they go, okay, well, now Ur is going to attack me. And then they move that army back. But I think it's at this point, uh, if they move the army back this turn, right, uh, we can combine our armies pretty easily, and I'm not super worried about it, right? We've got options. <sighs> okay, so that's going to be the turn. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I will see you all next time. Also, we're trying to get more scouts over in this area, so we can kind of see what's happening there. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.